Hey there, marketing analytics students. In this video, we're going to learn the absolute basics about logistic regression and how to apply it to customer and business prediction for marketing. In this video, we're going to introduce one of the most basic analytical tools that we use to predict individual consumer behavior. We're going to familiarize ourselves with how logistic regression is different and similar to linear regression, which you're already familiar with. We're going to be building a simple toy logistic regression model in Excel. And we're going to conduct some basic interpretation of the results of a logistic regression model. Keep in mind, we're not going to be doing a deep dive into logistic regression at this point. We're just going to be skimming the surface. OK, let's imagine a scenario. In this scenario, we're going to be doing cold calls, the most nightmarish of all the marketing activities and the thing that you certainly don't want to have to do on your first job. Specifically, we want to see if the number of times that we make a cold call to a business within a six month span is a good predictor of whether or not we make a sale to that prospective business. Let's take a look at the data that we're going to be working with. Here's our data. Notice that each row represents an individual business. And on the left hand side, we have the number of times we made a cold call to that business in the last six months. On the right hand side, we marked whether or not someone actually bought from that business. Notice our dependent variable, this right hand column here, is an actual categorical variable, a zero or one, a no or yes. In other words, there's just two possible categories. Here's that same data, but now it's been plotted into a scatter plot. Looks a little different than we're used to because on the y axis, the dots can only be on the zero or on the one. On the x axis, we see the number of cold calls that someone made. And even though the scatter plot looks a little different because of our strange categorical variable, we can still see there appears to be a relationship. As you make more and more cold calls, it appears it's more and more likely that you actually will induce a sale. But rather than just describing this particular pattern of data, we actually want to build an actual response model. And if we didn't know anything about logistic regression, maybe our first intuition would be to build just a simple linear model. In other words, the probability of someone of making a sale would simply be a simple linear model here. We'd have a beta parameter for the number of cold calls and the y-intercept. And sure enough, we can absolutely do that. Here is the best fitted line using a simple linear model. We can even get the calibrated parameters for this. However, let's look a little closer at this actual response model that we just calibrated. Some things are wrong. Look on the far left and right edges. Notice how our linear model actually makes negative predictions and makes predictions above one here. That simply doesn't make sense. Somebody can't have a negative probability of actually purchasing, and they can't have a probability of purchasing greater than one. And even if your soccer coach once told you that you can give more than 100%, we simply can't really do that. Also, take a look at the middle here. There's something else interesting going on that we might want to deal with. Notice how there appears to be a split point somewhere right around 15 cold calls. Right about here, there seems to be almost an inflection where suddenly we go from being very unlikely to actually make a sale to very likely. Yet our linear model, because of its very nature, just continues to model a simple straight line. Maybe we could actually catch and depict some of this inflection with a better model. So what did we learn by investigating building a simple linear model on this type of data? We've learned that we did in fact build a response model, but it's a bad response model. Let's try to build a better response model. This time, we're going to use a logistic model, the same exact logistic model that we've been using in previous exercises or previous in the semester. And sure enough, we can absolutely calibrate this model. We still need to calibrate the beta 0 and the beta 1. And when we do so, we create a nice S-curve here. And this S-curve has a couple of nice properties. First, notice that our probability estimates never go below 0 and never go above 1. That's one of the nice properties of this particular logistic model. It simply cannot go below 0 and below 1. And in addition, we caught a bit of that inflection here, didn't we? Notice that right around 15 or so cold calls, suddenly we go from 
uh, being unlikely to make a sale to speeding up into a high probability of making a sale. Ah, that looks a little better than our previous linear model. This is indeed a better calibrated model for our purposes. So, we've already learned that when we like to use logistic regression. Specifically, we use a logistic regression when the outcome we're trying to predict is two possible categorical outcomes, or a zero and one. This is very relevant for marketing because many of the things that we care about predicting are simply either or type of choices amongst consumers or businesses. In addition, we want to express those predictions of consumer behavior or business behavior as a prediction between zero and 100%. Now, in the previous example, we only had one single input, the number of cold calls. But logistic regression is more than happy to deal with one or more inputs. Let's see the next slide for that example. In this scenario, this, the data that we're dealing with is very similar. We still have the number of uh, cold calls that were made. We have a dichotomous or binary outcome of 0, 1, whether someone actually purchased. And in addition, we've added yet another predictor. This time, we have a predictor about whether or not the person who is making cold calls to the business was a veteran employee or a new employee. 0 means new person, 1 means veteran. Turns out, just like when we're dealing with regular regression models and trying to calibrate it, logistic regression is more than happy to accommodate having an additional predictor. We proceed just as we have in the past. We add an additional input into the model here, and we have an additional parameter to calibrate. After we objectively calibrate the model, we absolutely have all of our parameters captured here. And notice that whether someone's a new hire or a vet, by turning this on to a 0 or 1, we effectively can create two different types of curves. Whether they're a vet or not a vet, we can see that the number of cold calls tends to increase the probability of sale. We know it tends to increase it because the parameter here is positive. We can always read it that way. In addition, we remember that a veteran employee was coded as a 1 and a new employee was coded as a 0. So when they were in fact a veteran as a 1, we multiply. And that tells us that here, veterans, because it's a positive coefficient, are in general more likely to create a sale. And we can see that in the curve that we've plotted. Great. Using this equation, we can start telling hypothetical tales of different types of salespeople. Let's imagine a veteran employee who made only five cold calls. When we plug those into the input values, we see that they have a probability of making a sale 36.8% of the time. When we imagine a veteran who made 25 cold calls, they have a 95.1% chance of closing a sale. On the other hand, our new hires, if they only make five cold calls, they only have a 10.4% chance of making a sale. And a new hire who made 25 cold calls has a 79.4% chance of making a sale. We can clearly see here that veterans outperform new hires, but for whether you're a veteran or a new hire, it does in fact behoove you to make many cold calls to the same business, even though they probably claim that they're annoyed. In the previous slides, we learned a little bit about how to interpret the betas of a logistic regression model, but I was a little loose with my terminology there, and not, as quite, not quite as clear as I, I am when we're talking about interpreting betas, betas in linear regression models. Why is that? Well, if we do a little algebra manipulation, we can see why. These are the exact same equation just mathematically rearranged. This is the logistic model that you're used to seeing, and here's it reorganized, so that on the right-hand side, it looks a lot more like the standard linear model you're used to seeing, but on the left-hand side here, we now have the, national, the, the natural log of the ratio of the probabilities of the outcomes. Hmm, see the similarity. Now, this equation on the right is in fact just the standard linear model. I'm only putting it here on the left-hand side so that you can see how similar it looks to the version of the logistic model that's depicted on the right-hand side. Notice how the both right-hand sides of the equation look as though they're exactly the same. However, because of the differences on the left-hand side, the interpretation of the beta parameters becomes rather tricky. For a linear model, we can always just say a one-unit change in x1 will cause a b1 increase or decrease on y, because that's the simple slope. Sure, that's pretty easy. We've been doing that all semester, and you've been doing that since algebra class. On the other hand, 
Interpreting a logistic model version is a one unit change in x1 will cause a b1 increase or decrease on the natural logarithm of the odds of the probability of the outcome. Huh, that's tricky and not something most of us have an intuitive grasp of. Wrapping up. We learned a lot about what logistic regression is and why we need it and like to use it in marketing. We also learned a little bit about how to interpret the results of a logistic regression model. However, this is clearly just the beginning. Even though we pointed out some of the ways to interpret a logistic regression model, we didn't talk about how to actually perform the objective calibration, and we didn't talk a lot about exactly how to interpret those betas, other than pointing out it can be difficult to do so. Okay, everybody, that concludes our brief introduction to logistic regression. In future videos, we're going to learn how to actually perform logistic regression and calibrate those parameters ourselves, and we're going to learn how to conduct much more rigorous interpretation of logistic regression models. Also, Baby Groot thinks you're doing a wonderful job. Keep it up.